Okay, today is, today is December 5th, 2011. We have a graph representing the cycles of the moon. Our y-axis, okay, is our dependent variable. Our x-axis is our independent, okay? And y is measuring proportion or percentage of the moon visible, referring to the number of days in the year, okay? So if we're on the first day of the year, and we get up to the 20th day of the year. So we just talked about how one represents 100%, or in other words, a full moon. So on the 20th day, after the start of the moon cycle, we can see the entire moon. Ten days after that, you cannot see any of the moon. Oh, sorry, 20 days after that. 20 days after that again, we see another full moon. So this is the cycle it's going through. What's important is we need to make sense of all of our definitions here in terms of this. So this is a periodic function, okay? So we have a periodic function. And essentially what that is, is that is a function that repeats a cycle, okay? It keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again, possibly forever. I know it wasn't quite we, forever long. So what I want to do is I want to define some of these points because you're going to need to know what they are for sine waves. The peak of one of these would be considered the highest point. Okay? Yes. So the peaks of these, it has many peaks. In fact, all of the peaks are on the same highest point. That's uh, independent. So this is the peak. The coordinate of our first peak would be 20 and 1. Our second peak would be 60 and 1. Our next peak after that would be 100 and 1. Our next peak after that is 140 and 1. 180 and 1, and then essentially 220 and 1. So there's many points that are peaks here. They all represent essentially a full moon, when you can see 100% of the moon. Okay. What's important is that you recognize that these are the peaks of the graph. Along with that same idea, just so happens we're going to have troughs. Now, I know you can't really see this dotted line, but those troughs are represented by the lowest points in this cycle. Okay? So we have troughs at 0 and 0, 40 and 0, 80 and 0, 120 and 0, 160 and 0, and 200 and 0, okay? So, it's important that you guys can recognize peaks and troughs. Pretty simple thing to do. It's the highest point and the lowest point, okay? Another thing we're going to talk about is the period of the function. So, peaks and troughs deal with our y-axis, essentially the highest points and the lowest points. So, we're always referring to our y-axis. Our peak would be at 1. And our trough would be at the lowest point, which is zero. All right. So we've talked about a peak, and we've talked about a trough. Now, we're going to talk about a period of a function. This is a little trickier to recognize. A period of function can be measured anywhere along the function. It's essentially the amount of time which is our independent variable, how much time has passed, we're measured in right now days, between getting from one point to the next in the same way. Okay. So one example of that would be, let's say we start at our zero and zero. For us to get back to that point, how much time has elapsed? 
how much time has passed between here? We started at zero, we got to? 40 days. About a month. 40 days. So 40 days has passed in the course of this period. I'm just going to try to highlight that a little. Okay? So what that means is this cycle, or each period in this cycle, takes 40 days to complete. So if I continuously put lines down our 40 days, oops, I can break these into... I can break those into their periods. Okay? So I've broken this into one, two, three, four, five different periods. Now the trick to this is that I could have started anywhere. Maybe we have a function that doesn't start at the origin. So for example, let's say I started here. And I'm going to put this point down here. That point is essentially 50 and we're going to say 0.5, okay? This red point I've put here. Now, I need to complete a full period cycle. A full period cycle from here means I'm going to get to the same point in the same way. So if you notice this, so, sorry, that was at 90 and 0.5. Now, I chose a spot on the graph, and I want to show you how to complete a cycle from this point. So, if I were to go up, and then come back down, I'm technically at the same point. But I haven't got to that point in the same way. When I was approaching the original one I started at, I was heading upwards along this wave. As I get to this same point, I'm now heading downwards. So I have actually have not completed a cycle. An entire cycle would be me getting back to this point, which is over here, in the same way. So that is a full cycle. If you measure it again, we went from 90 to 130, 40 days. So a cycle always takes 40 days, in this case, to complete. A period, in order to get the complete cycle of a period, you have to get to that same point again in the same way. So I'm going to highlight it. So this would be a complete period. And what's important to notice about it is that from my starting point, I was coming up the wave to get there. Now, technically, we got to that same point again, but we were heading downward. So that's how I know I haven't completed the cycle. I have to get to the same point in the same way. So the next time I reach that point is at 130 days, and I'm actually heading upwards again. Exactly. So I've got to that same point in the same direction I started at, so I know I've completed an entire period. And remember, we already figured out a period was 40 days, so we can test this. This was at 90, and the end of this period was at 130, which is a cycle of 40 days. Exactly what we discovered in our first part when we broke this up. So a period can start and end anywhere along the function. We just have to figure out how long it takes to complete that period. So the three things we've talked about now are a peak. And remember, a peak deals with our y-axis. A trough, which also deals with our y-axis. Period deals with the x-axis. We measure along the x-axis to figure out a period. And then we're going to talk about a cycle. Okay, so now the last thing we want to talk about is a cycle. A cycle can be defined in a number of ways. A cycle is essentially the distance of a period, but they may ask us the distance of two cycles or three cycles. So a cycle is a period repeated. Sorry about that. So when we started here at 90 and went to 130, that would be considered one cycle. We completed the period to complete one cycle. But let's say that I've decided I want to figure out how far two cycles are. Okay, so what we're going to need to do, let's say we're starting this one right here. We're going to start it at 150, okay? So we're at 150 and 0.5, and I have to complete two cycles from here, okay? Whoops. 
Now, we've already figured out that a period is 40 days. So we have a good idea. We know that our two cycles is going to cost us 80 days. Well, let's actually put this along the graph. So when I go down, I come up. I haven't completed a period even though I'm at the same point. I have to get to that point the same way I approached it from before. So I was heading down. Exactly. This would be half a period or half a cycle. So when I come back down here, I've now completed one cycle. But I need to complete two. So I'm going to go down, up, and I'm actually going to have to come back down again to complete two cycles. So the green highlighted part represents two cycles along. along. So we have the period function of a dishwasher. Okay? And what this is measuring is the volume of water used. Okay, volume of water used over a certain amount of time. So what we got to figure out from the very first question is why does this operation of a dishwasher model a periodic function? So what we need thing. That's right. So every 15 minutes the cycle repeats. Now, many of you may have looked at this and discovered that these two were not the same. So you would have got confused and said, well, this can't be a periodic function because these cycles don't repeat. But what we're looking for is a set pattern. We're looking at a bigger picture here. From 0 to 15, and then from 15 to 30, we get the same cycle again. So the period of this function is actually every 15 minutes. We repeat that cycle, okay? So our period is 15 minutes long in this question. Okay. They want us to extend the graph for one more cycle, or sorry, one more period. If we were to do that, So if we need to complete another period of this function, we know that we've gone through two of them. If each one takes 15 minutes, how long will it take for our next period to end? It'll take 15 minutes. We'll end at the 45-minute point. So essentially, we're going to have a function that looks roughly like this. Goes up, comes across, down, up, across. Eh, I can't quite fit it all in. But that would be us drawing another period of this function. Question C asks us to find the volume used after eight cycles. Okay, So we know that one cycle or one period takes 15 minutes. And we've got to find eight cycles. I don't know why I keep spelling that word that way. Okay. We're looking for eight cycles. So if we're looking for eight cycles of this, we actually have to find how much volume of water is used in 15 minutes, or in other words, one cycle or one period. Now, if we take a look at this, this is describing a dishwashing machine. So at zero, there's no water in it. At roughly two minutes, this is full with 15, what is this measured in? Liters. This is full with 15 liters of water. Now we assume it uses the same 15 liters of water, okay, up until about the seventh minute. Then it empties itself at the eighth minute. So in this part, we're using 15 liters of water. But then in that same period, it actually fills up again from the eighth to ninth minute with 15 liters of water again. And eventually comes down and is done. There's a dry cycle. So we have 30 liters is used in 15 minutes, which means if we're looking for eight cycles, that's exactly what. We need to multiply eight by the 30 liters used in each cycle. So in eight cycles, this thing would use 240 liters of water. OK, the very last one says to state the domain and range. Now, first of all, the range of this function we're going to talk about to start. The range goes from 0 to 15. So we know that 
our range, we get y is a set of all real numbers such that it's between 0 and 15. Now, our x function, let's assume this is a cycle that goes on forever, okay? So let's say this dishwasher never stops, it continuously runs. It does have a starting point. The dishwasher does not run at zero or before zero, at a negative point in time. So our domain is x is a set of all real numbers such that x is greater than and equal to zero. Anything from zero on, it continuously runs. So it goes on forever, the domain of this function. Last thing I need to show you is if something is a periodic function. So I'm going to draw something here. Okay, I need to find out if this is a periodic function. Does it have a set pattern that repeats? Now, it does look like it's going up and down, up and down. But the problem is the height continuously grows larger and larger. Yeah. So this is not technically a repeating pattern. So this is not periodic. Page 331, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, and 13.